Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint, the first edition of 2018. I'm your host today, Tony Lavelle. Joining me later on will be Gail Morgan. We are filling in for uh, Richard Fields and John Cameron, and we're going to do things a little bit different tonight. I know those guys like to talk about the latest in the news, but I've been listening to Fox News now all day. And for those of you that do listen to Fox News, what are, what are we hearing? We're hearing the Banyan book. Uh, we're hearing uh, the, who's got the biggest button with the North Koreans. And what else? What else? Uh, something else. Anyway, I'm just getting tired of it. We need, we need to go do something. So I thought tonight, since it's a little bit different, rather than deal with current events, as a former officer within the Libertarian Party, what I'd like to talk about is the party itself to help some of you that don't know quite what we do and how it works a little bit about the Libertarian Party. For those of you that don't know, it was founded in 1974, I believe by a few Republicans. The notion was it was to bring freedom to all, be uh, fiscally conservative and socially liberal. But, and we've kind of done that. But in the last, since 1974, uh, we haven't been able to quite pull off the kinds of elections that we've needed. So, hey, Gail. All right. We've got Gail Morgan. Hey, Gail. Greetings. Thanks for joining us. So, Gail, you were a state officer, right? I was a state officer of the Libertarian Party for uh, 09 until uh, a little over a year ago. And... Uh, uh, one of the things that when I was in Sacramento County Libertarian Party, I noticed that the Libertarian Party in the last 40 years really hasn't gotten anybody elected. No governors, no federal office holders. Uh, but you've told me that at least here in California, we haven't done so bad. We've gotten, what have we gotten here in California elected? We, we have had a number of uh, city officials at uh, different levels. Many city council people have been elected. And I can think of, right off the top of my head, uh, people like John Inks, um, uh, Susan Marie Weber. Um, and and what uh, what office could, did they get? They, they were elected to the, um, well, they're rotating council member mayors in those, those cities. So if you're on the council, then the council decides among themselves who's going to be mayor when, and that's a rotational uh, position oh, I, I see, I see. So, so in California, on when you were when you were a state officer, state office holder, uh, about four, three or four mayors, three, some city councilmen, mayors, city, city, city council, council members, any county board of supervisors. We had at least one county supervisor, okay, board of supervisor that I remember of. However, can't remember his name right now. So. What about state office? Did we ever come close to get anybody in state office? The um, legislature or the... For, for the legislature, uh, Gary Brandt did very well a few years ago uh, running for the assembly. Uh, pulled off of just about 10% of the vote in, in uh, Nevada County. Okay. Uh, that's, We're close. We got close. close. And, and actually, uh, those numbers are were very good. Uh, this last uh, general election... Um, when Trump was up, we actually pulled uh, nationally. We got nine percent or five percent or nine, something. Nine, nine, yeah, nine plus. But that percent. wasn't enough to get elected. Almost ten. Wasn't yeah. enough to get elected, and but, this could have been our moment. Gary Johnson pulled in the nine percent range. Yeah, I'm not that. And I, I was a little disappointed in Gary Johnson, especially that. He is what who? what is Aleppo? <laughs> Grant, granted, he, but I think I would have fallen for the same trick. Here's my. They're talking about federal agencies. What about this agency? What yeah, about, he and should what have about been, Aleppo? He, he should, and he he's should have been up on to it. Cipher, he should, as, yeah, mm -hmm. he should have. It just made him look bad. True. But, but it, as soon as they said, um, they they referenced back to the middle. Oh yeah, I know Aleppo. That and he talked about it. So he was knowledgeable. It's it's this gotcha type of questioning, where. Everything is all about one, and then they totally switch the subject to something that does not relate to what you're talking so about. So they managed to get Gary to slip. They did. Now, well, well. Uh, now Gary is not the most perfect candidate we've ever had. But he would have made a damn good president. 
Oh, him and Bill, they were both governors that were successful. Yeah, no, they would have done it. They would have done it. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's what we need from you. We need you to join the party. Now, you're asking, well, how many people have you got elected? And that's what I was talking to Gail about. I was in, I, I held the office as the vice chair in Sacramento County. I attended state conventions. Here's what I found out. This you is know, I, get, was, I was vice chair of the Sacramento County Party for ten years before you got. got that's there. right. I took it over for him. Yeah, we had a we had a we had a coup d'état, and I took it over. But here's what I found out. Well, my my question was. The, that's when I became the uh, northern state. vice chair. Yeah, you got the promoted party, actually. And at that point, I did not run, and you filled the, the vacant seat. I'd forgotten who filled that seat, uh, but I knew you were in there. Somewhere. Yes. But here's what I'm disappointed about. I have high hopes for the party. But I'm really disappointed because we haven't really gotten anybody of significance elected. This is this would have been the election to get us going if we really had the momentum to do it. Here's the problem. Why don't we get people elected? Because our philosophy gets in the way. Sometimes. This is directly from the Libertarian National website. It's called the Preamble. Listen to this. As Libertarians, we seek a world of liberty a world in which all individuals are sovereign over their own lives and no one is forced to sacrifice his or her values for the benefit of others. And and there's other bits of philosophy in here that kind of define it. So a libertarian can be defined as a person who thrives, desires, and demands individual liberty for himself and for his other American citizens. The idea is that my rights, I should be able to do Pretty much anything I want, so long as it doesn't trample on the rights of my fellow citizens and destroy the planet. So I guess if I had a right to build and launch a nuclear weapon in my backyard, that would be bad because it could destroy other people's neighborhoods, so that that would not be polite. The problem is this. We build people up in the party to, to have such strong individual liberty that there's one aspect in libertarianism that I can't find and that's the word teamwork. <laughs> that that does many times tend to be a, a, a little bit of a challenge. Um, and, and let me let me expound on your comment there. My right to swing my fist stops before your nose starts. Yes. My unlimited right to swing yes. my fist yes. stops yes. Yes. before your nose starts. Yes, it would and be it would be like I live in Land Park, which is a regular city community here in Sacramento. Am I allowed to stand on my front porch uh, shooting a pistol in one hand, smoking a joint in the other, oh, and buck naked? Am I allowed to do that? Well, no, of course not. Well, there's a couple (laughs) challenges to that. Yes. And and that would be, one, those, that pistol you're firing in the air, those, those bullets are going to come back down somewhere. Yes, but, but yes, Number I'm, two, I'm violating. Are you going to, uh, are you going to uh, offend the sensibilities of somebody else who can see you? Yes. Now, if your yard is totally encased with a fence and nobody can see you, I don't care. If no, I still can't shoot the gun. But if so I was, a, out but, but the, the other part of that, if I was standing in 600, 1600 acres in the middle of nowhere in the high Sierras, who cares? Who cares right? So, I was looking at a, uh, at some plans on how to build an in-ground home this week. Now I don't have any plans to do so, but I was I, I look at things like this and, and look at people's endeavors to escape from the confines of, of normal what they call the the society that's oppressing them. They think, and so they they go out in the wilderness, go off grid. Dig a hole into the side of the hillside, put a, uh, a roof on the place, cover it up with um, soil, plant trees on top of their home. They put a door there, they can go in, they can look out. And inside, this lady was saying her home is 55 degrees year round, summer or winter, snow outside, blazing heat. I saw a desert home like that. But it's it was inside. 55 degrees in the desert in Arizona inside the yeah yeah you're absolutely right and and this is just anybody who's doing that looking to do that they're probably very libertarian not so much in the political philosophy but in the don't mess in my bedroom don't mess in my backyard don't mess with my pocketbook let me alone don't mess with my stuff yeah don't mess with me and that and i'll leave you alone that is 
the big picture, what a libertarian is, is don't tread on me, I won't tread on you. Well, one of the things, Gail, that uh, the other part of this with the Libertarian Party is that we have a reputation for being, in some circles, a wacky party. Mm -hmm. Now, how did we get that label? That's very easy. Where else do these people have to go? Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. The only wacky guy I saw was, what's his name? The young man that runs around in frilly little outfits and he's almost naked. And he runs around at the... Uh, at the state those, convention. Those are costumes, and he does that one day at each state uh, convention. Yeah, but what, what's his name? Star Child. Star Child. So he's kind of a hippie guy. He's a white guy. Looks like he's about 45. And he wears these little frilly outfits and little skimpy panties that he wears. And he gets treated like one of the gang. Now, I personally don't care. He can, I, his, his attire... We don't have anybody. His attire doesn't offend me. But what it does do is it gives credence to those that want to call us a wacky party. It doesn't help. We don't have anybody that goes around and weeds out people like this. Says you can't be in our party. But he can. He can. We want him to. We don't. We don't have anybody that goes. Through, we shouldn't have anybody that goes around weeding out people that no. are less than perfect. No. But at the same time, you take the people who want to legalize the ferrets. They can't go to the Democrats. Legalize the Democrats. what? Ferrets. Ferrets. Yeah, the, the little cat animals. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, who? who Vern, Vermin Supreme was at the convention in uh, uh, the presidential convention and drumming up a, a lot of, of attention there in Florida uh, that last year, about uh, in uh, 16. So where else could he go? He had not a very libertarian message, but certainly no Democrats wouldn't take him, Republicans wouldn't take him. The uh, Constitution Party or the American Independence, they wouldn't take him. I don't think the Greens would let him in either. So, um, Because of the way he looked or because he wanted ferrets? He didn't want ferrets. He, he had this boot on his head. And, a real boot? Yeah, a big one. And, <laughs> and he was, look him up. Uh, Vermin Supreme. Um, look him up. But where else can people like this go? Wait, but what can we, we do? Have, what, what, if we if we have the open door to whatever you want, and this is why. We, and and we, we welcome and we welcome whoever you are. You're we, welcome, Star Child. We where attract were they? some oh. good financial wizards, some people that understand their finances, understand where they should be. Got some good money. Koch brothers, for instance, are, are very libertarian. Um, there are some here in California. Uh, they they. The tomato industry is run by a libertarian in, in California. Well, and they they very much understand and and put up with the craziness too. But where else can can and, and our philosophy doesn't say anywhere in it shut out these people because well they, I'm, I'm holding up the rules right here and I see <laughs> nothing in here that says. You can't run around in lacy outfits as a man and wear skimpy little shorts and call yourself Star Child. I, I absolutely agree. So limited, we have to, we need a better way to, 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 to make it to the limited, mainstream. Limited government in both in, in uh, your personal rights yes. and in your finances. Well, it and says... That, that's, that I have summed up the biggest spectrum of the Libertarian Party in fiscally conservative... And socially tolerant. Yes, yes, and and get, to give you some good examples, what I got off the web page was our platform, and these are the things they believe in. I had one thing that popped out of my head right away. This is about personal liberty. It says here, this is in section 1.0. Individuals should be free to make choices for themselves, and must accept responsibility for the consequences of choices they make. The first thing that came to mind was the helmet law with motorcycles. The government said, "I'm because you're too stupid to protect yourself, I'm going to require you as a motorcycle rider to helmet, wear a helmet. I don't want to wear a helmet. Well, but if you crank your head open and become a vegetable, I'm going to have to pay for it. So I went to my insurance company, USAA, explained to them the situation. How much more would you charge me if I didn't want to wear a helmet? They said about 17%, about $80 total for the year to not wear a helmet. So let me not wear a helmet. Why does government want to get in on it? In my humble opinion, um, you're a lot safer with a helmet on. I would encourage you to wear a helmet. However, I do not think that the government should enforce a law that says you must 
and I sincerely hope that if you wipe out and hit your head on the pavement, that you're wearing a helmet when you do so. But I don't think that it should be an absolute requirement that none, under every circumstances, when you sit on a motorbike, that you must be wearing a helmet that limits your vision. I'm a cold miner. I don't want to wear a helmet when I'm going down in the mine. Well, it's a safety issue. It's part of your safety equipment. We require your, you to wear a helmet. Your employer may require, as a condition of employment, the adorning of certain safety attire. But I don't want to wear a helmet. He can let you go then. Yes, but or the reason why he wants me to wear a helmet is because he's concerned if I'm in an accident, I can, it'll, it might save my life having that helmet on. It may save your life and it may save him a lot of money. Oh, and okay, as, okay, and okay, as, okay, okay. <laughs> as okay. your employer, yeah, he has the right to set the rules of engagement. So, so this is individual in rights versus the rights of the organization. Yes. Who has the great? Who has the? Uh, well, here's another one. What about seat belts? I hate seat belts, and the government says we want you to be more safe. We're going to make everybody wear seat belts in a car. Well, I don't want to wear seat belts. Well, you have a greater chance of dying. It's an interesting fact. A number of years ago, in the um, mid to late 70s, I typically did not wear a seatbelt, even though it was the law you had to. But when I got into my Volvo, automatically, without thinking, I put the seatbelt on. But yes. I was in any of my other vehicles, I typically did not wear the seatbelt. And my wife would say, you need to put your seatbelt on. Oh, I put it on. But in the Volvo, without thinking, the structure, the design, it just was automatic. It just felt safe. And you felt connected to your Volvo by having your seatbelt on. No, not really. Well, here, here's something. But I knew it was a safe car, and maybe thinking about safety encouraged me that way. Here's something from the Libertarian Party. It says, since governments, when instituted, must not violate individual rights, we oppose all interference by government in the areas of voluntary and contractual relations among individuals. People should not be forced to sacrifice their lives and property for the benefit of others. So back unless to the you want to. Unless you want to. But back to the helmet thing. If we really wanted to save people's lives, I think we should pass a law requiring you to wear a helmet anytime you're outdoors. Whether you're in a car, all humans must wear helmets seat, seat outdoors. Belts, <laughs> seat belts are most important for children. Yes. Because with children, and then we got about 10 minutes left, but with children, they are, they are more, we need to take care of children. They're, they're, they're more vulnerable. And so that's why there's no seat belts. Well, wait a minute, buses. wait a minute. It says here. Did there's... you know that? That's what? There's no seat belt in school buses. Yeah, but there's been an argument of trying to get them, and I'm sure they'll eventually come. I, I find it interesting. I did drive school buses uh, at a point in my career. And the, here, here the fact is. behind it is that the design of the seat, each seat, the back of the seat is designed in such a way to catch the child in the seat behind it and prevent them from flying forward in the bus. So the seat in front, let, you'll bounce off that. That is interesting why they down, didn't have any the, seat the belts. Design of it. If the child slides forward, it'll, it'll bring Why doesn't California have seat belts for the school buses? They should have done that. That would have been a no-brainer. How about regional transit? Well, do you know if I've never been but on I'll, public I'll, transportation that has seatbelts on a, on a subway train or a bus? I have. Really? Where? Regional Transit. Here in Sacramento? Yes. Do they have them now? There are two seat belt, three seat belts in a bus. But are they for wheelchairs? They are. They're not for humans. They have both. The driver has a seat belt, it's a okay. lap belt, and for a chair because, as you saw when I came in, I, I. Uh, Motor spend chair. a lot of time in a, in a power wheelchair. They have a couple uh, hooks that hold the chair in place in the back, and they always want to put one in the front that holds it to the front. That's their policy. It doesn't mean we have to follow their policy. That's their policy. And then they also have an additional set of straps that was is a seat belt for the passenger. And now, is that for the passenger sitting in his electric scooter? Yes. Listen, I, mean, you, you, I heard you say something about parents. They don't require that. Here's something about parents. It says, this is according to libertarians now. Parents and other guardians have the right to raise their children according to their own standards and beliefs. This statement shall not be construed as to condone child abuse or neglect. 
Now, when I read this, the first thing I thought about was child abuse and neglect. No, no, <laughs> the religious people that take their kid to the hospital, but they're very limited on what they will allow their children to have for medical procedures. And is that the Mormons, or the uh, the, the Seventh Day Adventists, or the Jehovah Witnesses that, that believe, believe in limited or no medical care? Christian science. Now, if I read this right, this tells me that guardians have the right to raise their children according to their own standards. And but I, I absolutely firmly believe those parents do not believe they're committing child abuse or neglect. They're doing it because their God wants them to. God says they will not be exposed to that bill. There, there is a, a uh, still referenced SB 277 uh, movement in the Sacramento area, and, and, and it encompasses much of the state, but there's an active course still in Sacramento from opposing a bill introduced to the legislature by uh, Dr. Richard Pan, uh, the uh, one of the Sacramento area um, uh, assembly members, and you can't be in school without having your shots up current. And that's something that's kind of new. That's been back in because of parents debating va uh, vaccinations or not. That's a good one about. Well, that would fit in here. Yes. If the parents don't want them to get vaccinated, then but according to there is some amount of research that shows that a lot of children may be getting autism because of the ammonia in the shots. And then there's there's research that shows that's not true, that just debunked it and said that is not true, so who knows? Well, I've looked at both studies and they're both as valid as the other. So we're kind of at an impasse. No serious research has been done the, enough to answer that did question. You, did you have vaccines when you were a kid? Uh, they existed. But you, you don't know if you got them? Or? Oh, I didn't. See, I have them. My, my mom got me and my brother, and I remember us lining up at school. What's the flavor of the day? Oh, it's chicken pox. So we lined up and got our chicken pox shot. I had chicken pox. Yeah, I had, I had the measles and mumps, but I, I didn't get chicken pox. I had measles and mumps. Actually, all the childhood communicable diseases, I had them when I was in third grade. I had them all but chicken pox. I got them all right then. So that means your your immune system has already got them. So, yes. But do you, So I, now... I, now the only thing I can get is whooping cough. Back to this thing about the parents. Do you do you believe that a parent has the right to deny medical care to their child based on their religious beliefs? Uh, as a, as a libertarian, not as not as Gail Morgan. I think it's horseshit, and I'd I'd get I'd go to a judge and make him get it. But that's me. But yeah, I would. A, I, you're not really libertarian. Then. Yeah, but I would I would I would uphold this. I would uphold a person's if I unless I'm going to be you know just. I'm not going to be true to there, my There is philosophy. a reason. There is a reason to have a child vaccinated. I wonder about the people who's, who are getting vaccines for their children. Their children are all vaccinated, and they're afraid of the other children who aren't getting their vaccinations. And if my child is vaccinated, and I'm afraid your child who is not vaccinated is going to give my child something can't give your then, child something then i don't believe that the vaccination works the only one that can get uh you gather what the I only one said. that could get infected by an unvaccinated child is another unvaccinated child that if my correct. child's vaccinated i'm okay yes. they can play with can play with them kids. Yes. so uh what what about so that's why that's that's one of the biggest reasons i think the whole thing's bunk so it's it's, it's do you think how that how can do you think that government should force in, in vaccinations or let the no. parents decide? Parents. Do you think the government should force that the the Seventh Day Adventist to get a, give his kid a blood transfusion? And once again, I think that's Christian Science. And no, I, I don't. Um, I don't I don't like but, it. I don't like it. No, and, and and I think that that there should be a certain amount of of education involved in the process, um, but. Push come to shove, a lot of kids die anyway, and I'm not sure that there's that many cases that really come up where there's going to be a few every year. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Um, the parents are going to live with that for the rest of their lives. Yeah, you're right. It is kind of a rare, I mean, how, how many cases do we have in the United States where a kid died because of parents refusing to, based on religious practices. But I can't think of any. I, I can't think of any either. Because but, the courts got involved. But that doesn't mean that 
it doesn't it doesn't nullify what the libertarians say. It's really kind of if they're going to have their own individual liberty, and parents should have be able to control what happens to their kids. Yes. Okay. And if I choose for because I, God doesn't want me to get a blood transfusion, that's my right to do so. And, and, and we say you're right. I, I understand that if a parent says that, well, maybe you want to get the larger family involved and make sure there's some solidarity there. Um, you want to make, you know, as long as the person making the decision is of sound mind, yeah. then, you know, um, I, I have a challenge stepping on their rights. I do. You would have a challenge doing that? Yes. I, yeah, and I, I've seen it. I'm, I've only seen We've it on TV shows. Left here, I've so. only seen it on TV shows where the the kid they wouldn't give the kid the blood transfusion. Kid was nearly dying. So what did the hospital do? They went to court and tried to get the judge to do it. First, I thought the parents were stupid. Yes, of course. But as they started going to court, and then the court sided with the hospital, and they took the kid and got him the blood, and he was fine. He came out just fine. But the parents were kind of devastated. They felt like they'd been raped. Yeah. They had that look. And, and I thought, man, did, and, we, did we do the right thing or not? And, and did they force the parents to pay for it too? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Here, here's something else. For this is, again, if you want to find this, go to a Libertarian Party platform. And it'll have the preamble and a few other things. But read about what we're about. LP.org. And it'll help you understand because we truly want you to become a member of the Libertarian Party. This is a great party. Why? Because we picked the best, as Gail said. We're, we're uh, fiscally conservative. Oh, we're almost out of time. We are. We are out of time. Yeah. Well, this is Libertarian Counterpoint, and this is Tony Lavelle with you. And with me is Gail Morgan. And we'll see you on the rebound. Bye-bye. And, and thanks uh, to, to our staff in the other room. Yeah. Who's doing everything in my place. Let's see, that would be uh, William Grover. Uh, yeah. Glover at the sound, at the mixer, at the CG machine. At the uh, at the TriCaster. <laughs> and our camera operator. <laughs> first, first time that he's had to do everything. I, I, I previously held that record. Are we off? I don't know, but we probably are. Are we off, William? Yep. Oh, he says keep talking. Stretch it out. Uh, hold up your fingers. How many more minutes we have? It's William? seconds now. We have five minutes. Four mm -hmm. minutes. Three, seconds. two. Thank you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint. Yeah, this is Tony and Gail coming at you. Thank you. Go join the party. <laughs> well, where are we? So we have until 8 o'clock if we...